Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. First of all, my Android Auto is finally fixed in my MG HS Essence and I've been struggling with Android Auto for a very long time. So in this video I'm going to be telling you about my impressions, like oh, about Android Auto, how it works, what it took to fix it. So if you're interested in both the service experience that got me to this point and the actual very, very, very quick on the spot kind of assessment of Android Auto and what I might be using it for, keep watching, let's talk about it. Hello again, I'm Dimitri from MG Owners Australia. Second thing that I wanted to highlight to you, my friends, before we get to the meat of this video, is the attempted different setup of the video. I'm using a different camera app on my phone to record myself, and I'm also using this kind of cheap and cheerful lapel microphone rather than how I used to talk to the camera straight away there. So you, if you have been watching my videos before this one, and if now you kind of have good headphones on and can tell the difference between the sound, please, please just maybe spare a minute and put a comment down below if you prefer this format compared to my previous formats. What was the background story? Background story was that everything was great with the car when I just got it, when I bought it brand new. However, I had an immediate issue with the USB-based, cable-based connectivity to the infotainment system. Specifically, I was very much after enabling Android Auto because that's how the car was sold to me. The built-in navigation system, Maps, there is a navigation system, but it's ancient. It's like it was made in 1950s. And I said in my previous video, or in a couple of videos even, that as an owner who is getting a luxurious car for relatively low price, I accepted it because it was sold to me as, mate, it doesn't matter what kind of software sits there, because 99.9% .9 of people would be connecting their phone and using modern Google Maps or something like that. Wonderful, that was fine. As soon as I tried to do it for the very first time, first of all, the USB port on my MGHS just fell through. That was just a massive disappointment on the quality of the plastic, and that's what I commented on in the previous videos. So some elements of this plastic, specifically the holders for those ports or whatever, whatever that little piece of plastic there is, is definitely cheap and it wasn't attached properly. But that was the only transgression so far, fingers crossed that the car had massively on me. Boot fixed itself, other kind of things, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, I could not use Android Auto. That is, a, that is the biggest issue that I had with the car. And it was annoying. It was annoying because my 2,000 kilometer drive, 1,000 up the coast, 1,000 down the coast, had to be done when I needed the maps, had to be done kind of just putting the phone down here in this very non- user-friendly and non-ergonomically modern, I would say, panel here of MGHS. It looks luxurious, but that's about it. The port was fixed uh, the first time I brought the car into the service, but the cable still didn't seem to connect my phone. The device was not recognized as an Android device. It was just, it just didn't work. And I also will, would like to highlight that I had a bundle, uh, several cords, several USB cords, yeah, I took the car to the car service eventually, not long ago, like last week. They brought their own phone with their own cable, long whatever cable, whatever they had, not my cables, okay? Before they took the car into service, they connected their phone and it didn't work. That is the most important thing. So, point number one in this video, if you're interested about Android Auto and MGHS, I still maintain the position that it's temperamental. It is temperamental. They tried their phone and I tried a billion different things as well, okay? And it didn't work. But anyway, I left the car there for a day in the car service, in the service. Very nice people, Ride MG in Sydney, fantastic people, um, patient, friendly. They did a full software update because they didn't know what it was either. So they did the full software update of the infotainment system and when I picked, when I came to pick up the car, they give me this report of what's been happening with the car, and they said, uh, software update applied, tested the system, and it works. Before I drove off, I have checked, I have checked the, whether it works. Connected, didn't work. I was like, someone has got to be just pranking me here. It's just like, uh, is there a hidden camera somewhere here? Like, what's up? 
and I'm like, guys, how did you sign off on this? What's up? The guy says, sit tight, mate, I have no idea. Runs somewhere into the bowels of their, of their service center. Comes back with some other dude, with some other phone. In fact, he said it was Oppo phone, whatever, model, not to advertise Oppo phones or whatever. And he comes with his own cable, and that cable works, and that phone works. And I'm like, mate, hold your, hold your breath right now, nobody breathe, uh, let me try my phone. So I take my phone, I connect it with his cable, and it works as well. So it was all in the temperamental cable. And I dare say this temperamental sensitive system that only works on some cables, doesn't work on others, other cables, I don't bloody know, because every cable that I tried has been used for every other purpose, mostly charging, mind you, but also data transfer. Also, I'm recording these videos, take photos, and I download them to my PC for editing, for whatnot. And yeah, that, that's, just, that's just what it is. It's very, very, very weird. Now, as far as my limited so far experience with the android auto and with the on-screen maps and all that kind of stuff is concerned what are my immediate thoughts immediate impressions well my friends it certainly is a improvement of quality of life that's for sure compared to the fact that i just had to fit the phone here down there somewhere when i actually needed to use maps in the past like i mentioned to you before instead of that it right now is nice and civilized right here on the screen look I did not use any other particular apps. I tried to switch between the apps. I tried to switch back to the home screen and to the camera again. I tried to experiment with a couple of other kind of UI clicks here because I've never used Android Auto before. Like for you, it might look silly what I'm doing. For me, please keep in mind, I don't know what it is. I don't know what I'm doing really with Android Auto. Um, to me, the responsiveness either of the screen or Android Auto system itself seems a bit slow and in some cases it looks like I'm just I continue pressing a button here on the screen which is supposed to be taking me out of maps presumably and take me to the Android Auto home screen then go take me back to the maps and so on and so forth and it didn't seem to respond at all I don't know please as always comment in the comments below especially if you have an MG and especially if you're using MG wired Android Auto system. Maybe there are some kinks that I simply don't know about. This is the process of discovery for me, as well as the process of on-the-spot owner's review. You know what I mean? So for me, is it an improvement of life? Is it finally making use of this massive infotainment screen here properly as it's intended to be? Yeah, absolutely. It adds to the value of the car that I so far have been not capitalizing on, for the lack of a better word. But is it all smooth sailing and it looks awesome and it seems like it has my back and it's working and all that kind of stuff? Not so much. I don't know. I don't know. Not so much. I need to see it on an open road. I need to see it kind of in, in further use in order to have a more educated impression about this, I suppose. But considering that it's a wired connection, right? It's not like it's a wireless Android Auto that may be susceptible to some form of lag and I would accept that as a user I would say okay well what do you expect Dimitri but in this particular case it's wired the system has no excuses to be slow on me just do it but it doesn't or at least doesn't as fast as I would expect anyway so that's my immediate impression otherwise look it's good old Google Maps you, you as a user of mobile devices for God knows how many already years we've been using this stuff and take it for granted now like Google has always been with us now you feel right home. You feel great. You feel like, yep, that's what it, what it should have been from the very beginning. My main massive, mind you, massive beef with this whole setup is just how ergonomically poor the whole setup of the central panel of MGHS, even the top of the range model. I know it's not like they would have had a different central panel for top of the range versus, versus base model, but still, my friends, if you haven't seen my video where I compare Havel H6 with MGHS Essence, I encourage you to take a look at it. At least fast forward to the chapter where I talk about practicality of the car, you know, usability and ergonomics type of stuff, where I mostly rave about the central panel of Havel H6, of how user-friendly and made-for-life type of stuff it is. Here, it's made for decoration. It's made for people who have absolutely nothing to put anywhere. 
which is not really a home-friendly use of a car. I'm sorry, I love this car. I love it. But I have to always be honest with you that this possibly and hopefully what differentiates my channel from just hyped up dealers and car review channels that I can't stand personally. Give me a like if you agree with me, by the way. Really appreciate your support. But in this case, take a look, my friend. The whole thing that I have here to work with are a couple of cup holders. Yeah, that where I don't want to shove my phone into. I do occasionally, by the way, because I have no choice. But there is this little slit on the side, which looks at first when you're buying a car like, wow, how smart, you would just slide your phone in there. Mate, as soon as you slide your phone in there, you have this massive cable, sort of nowhere to hide really. Yeah, sure, of course I could have rolled it up a little neater and shoved it into that little nook there next to the USB ports, and that's probably what I will do on longer trips. But at the end of the day, it is still not what it needs to be, in my opinion. It is very, very poor ergonomics and usability. I am not very brushed up on my terminology of which word is perfectly applicable to what I mean here, but hopefully you know what I mean because I'm showing it right to you, yeah? Not a fan. Not a fan and nothing I can do about it because I bought the car like this. It will always be like this. I will always have my phone here kind of awkwardly shoved on the side and um, the cable is going to be always somewhere around here, around the gear stick and, you know, certainly obviously easier to arrange when there is no passenger next to me. But at the same time, that's not how travels happen normally. You have a passenger at least in the front seat next to you. These are my impressions, my friends. That's my slightly embarrassing, awkward story of how my Android Auto finally got fixed. I'm very happy about it. We'll need to get used to the weird non-responsiveness to buttons, don't know what's going on there, and we'll have to learn to live with a massive cable rolled up somewhere here or hanging around here while the phone is shoved here into the thing. So not, not a massive, not a huge fan, but yep, that's one more system finally working for me and MGHS and not like a gaping hole. This non-working USB and non-usable infotainment screen other than for the purposes of turning on and off air conditioning, um, it uh, now is not on my radar anymore, so now finally it works. That's good news. Share your thoughts, share your experience with similar maybe things that you had with your car. What about Android Auto and other cars if you don't own MG HS, but how is yours? I am interested obviously in wired connections. I'm interested in wired connections because that's closer to home rather than wireless connections. Thanks again, as always, for your support, for your likes. Gives me really, really motivation to keep going with these videos. I know that you like them, and I know that you want more. And please subscribe for more. As I said multiple times, the plans are to continue expanding onto my wife's ZST, talk a little bit more about ZST, experience drives in ZST, and opportunistically, rather than as a kind of a planned activity, I will look for opportunities to compare our cars, ZST and HS, with possibly other competitive brands within the same price category, similar to what I did with Havel H6. Again, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll speak to you in the next one. See you later. Bye for now.